Hello students and welcome back to the second part of learning about the intermediate value theorem. In this video we're going to be looking at tons of practice problems that are going to help you in the homework that's coming up. So let's get started. In all of these problems what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the intermediate value theorem is actually going to be effective in this case and if it is effective we're going to see where those values might be happening. In our first problem we're going to go using our first part of the intermediate value theorem which is is the function continuous on the interval. So let's see this. If I'm looking at this function I notice if I have negative 2 in my denominator for x, then negative 2 plus 2, and I'm divided by 0. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 2. Well, is that even within the range of negative 1 to 3? No, it's not. So um, since it's not within that range, I know we're continuous on that interval. Continuous on the interval negative 1 to 3. So now we're going to get into the second part of our definition for the intermediate value theorem. And what we need to do is check the endpoint. So we can check the endpoints of uh, our function. So we're going to do f of negative 1 and f of 3 and see if this 2 thirds that's, that we're looking for, if that 2 thirds is happening in between there. So let's start with f of negative 1. Okay, so I'll get negative 1 minus 3 over negative 1 plus 2 which is going to come out to be negative 4 over 1, which gets me negative 4. And then I'm going to substitute that 3 in, so the other endpoint. So f of 3. Okay, so I'm going to get 3 minus 3 over 3 plus 2, which is going to get me 0 over 5, which is okay. I get 0 from this. And so what I now need to do is uh, think, all right, is 2 thirds in between negative 4 and 0. Well, 2 thirds is positive and in between negative 4 and 0, I'm not going to have any positive values. So 2 thirds isn't even between that. So the intermediate value theorem cannot be used in this case. How do we say that? Well, we're going to say f of c equals 2 thirds is not between f of negative 1 and f of 3. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem does not apply for f of c equal to two thirds on the interval negative one to three. We really have to specify why the intermediate value theorem does not work in this case. So be very comfortable using all of this particular notation as you continue to move forward. Over here to problem two, it's gonna be the same function um, and the same y values, so the same two thirds, but now we're going to change the interval that we're looking at. So we'll start with part one, and we know from before that we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to negative two. Well, let's look at this. Negative two is in between negative four and one, which is in the interval negative four to one. So we can say that the function is not continuous. on negative 4 to 1. So we don't even need to check part 2 anymore since part 1 failed. So therefore, the intermediate value theorem does not apply for f of c on negative 4 to 1. We don't even need to go into checking part 2. Alright, so now here we have p of x equal to e to the x plus 2. Our intervals um, are e to the, to the x plus 2 times cosine x. And the interval that we're looking at is negative 2 to 1. We're seeing can 5 happen somewhere on the interval. If it does, we'll figure out what the value is for c. So um, our first part, you have to kind of um, be intuitive about this. So I have an exponential function times cosine. So exponential functions have the domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. And cosine also has the same domain that is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the entire time the function is continuous. Is continuous on 
negative 2 to 1. So now we need to get values for our endpoint. So now let's start with p of negative 2. So all right, I'm going to substitute that in. So I'm going to get e to the negative 2 plus 2 times cosine of negative 2. Well, this is something that we'll be able to put into our calculator. Make sure that you stay in radian mode. So e to the negative 2 plus 2, that's going to get me e to the 0, which is 1. But cosine of negative 2, um, I put that into my calculator, and that comes out to be approximately, it's going to be negative 0 0.2. 4161. So it's approximately that point. And uh, now we're going to check our other endpoint, p of 1. So I want to get e to the 1 plus 2 times cosine of 1. And let's see what value that comes out to be. So I get e cubed times cosine of 1. And I put that into my calculator and double check this on your calculator, but it comes out to be approximately 10.8. Five, two. Okay, so now we need to check these. Does 5 come in between those two numbers? And 5 is in between negative 0 0.4161 and 10.85. Okay, so the IVT does hold. So therefore, the intermediate value theorem applies for P of C equal to 5 on our interval negative 2 to 1. So now we need to actually figure out what's the value of C. Okay, so we'll say, all right, so P of C, we know it's gonna be five. So five equals E to the C plus two. So we substitute C in for X, so we can solve for C, times the cosine of C. Now there's no really algebraic way to solve for this. So this is where calculator is gonna come in handy. What I like to do is graph it. So if you need help with that, definitely contact me for some help on that. Um, but I'm gonna graph these two and see where they are intersecting. And so my value for C that I get is negative 0.334 and I'm looking at negative 0.334 and I do notice that it is in between it's in between the interval that we're looking at so it happens in between negative 2 and 1 and we're able to discern what that value is first we knew that a value existed and then we were able to find it on the calculator if we didn't if we knew that um, if we knew that the value didn't even exist in between negative two and one, we wouldn't have ever even checked on our calculator. So let's go on to question four. Okay, here in question four, we're looking at f of x. We have x on x minus two. We're looking at the interval in between negative one and one, and we're looking for the value of c where it comes out the y value is negative one half. So start with part one, is this continuous? Well, I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 2 and that is not happening in between so which is not between negative 1 and 1 and so everywhere else our function is actually defined so let's keep going into part 2 now I need to find f of a and f of b okay so f of negative 1 I'm gonna get negative 1 on negative 1 minus 2 so I get negative 1 over negative 3, which comes out to be 1 third. Now I'm going to do f of positive 1, and I'm going to get 1 over 1 minus 2, which is 1 over 1 minus 2. That's going to get me 1 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. So is negative 1 half in between negative 1 and 1 third? Yes, it is. So therefore, the intermediate value theorem applies for f of c equal to negative one half on negative one to one. So let's solve for this now. All right, so I know I'm gonna get negative one half. So uh, I'm gonna substitute c into the function. So c over c minus two equals negative one half. So let's solve for c. Now I'm just gonna kind of cross multiply here. So I'm gonna get, um, let me see, I'll, I'll multiply by negative 2, so negative 2c equals uh, c minus 2 times 1, so I'm going to get c minus 2. Now I need to continue solving for c, so I'll subtract c on both sides, I'll get negative 3c equals negative 2, and then I'll divide by c, so divide by, sorry, I'll divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and I'll get c equals positive 2 third. And um, barring any mistakes that I may have made algebraically, um, we know that C is happening in between negative 1 and 1 and that the value of C, in this case 2 thirds, the Y value is negative 1 
half. And this can all be determined using our intermediate value theorem. And now for the final problem in our practice, we're gonna be looking at um, a function negative one half to the negative x plus three minus two on the interval three to five for, let's see if there's a value on the interval where a C value comes out to be negative four. So first I'm gonna say, okay, is this function continuous on the interval? Well, yes it is because all exponential functions are continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we'll go into part two now, which is checking our endpoint. So we'll do f of three. So I get, um, okay, so I'm gonna substitute three. And so f of three equals negative one half, negative three plus three minus two. All right, so one half, uh, the exponent negative three plus three comes out to be zero. So, um, okay, so negative one half to the zero minus two. And one half to the zero, that's one. So I get negative one and negative one minus two comes out to be negative three. So now let's look at our other endpoint, f of five. So f of five equals negative one half, negative five plus three minus two, which is equal to um, negative one over two to the negative second minus two, which is equal to, um, well the negative, I can flip the uh, fraction inside to the reciprocal, so negative two squared minus two, uh, so the negative uh, flipped it, the one half to positive two. All right, so two squared is four. So I get negative four minus two, which is negative six. So is negative four in between negative three and negative six? Yes, it is. So therefore, the intermediate value theorem applies for f of c equal to negative four on our interval three to five. So let's figure out our value for c. So I'm gonna get negative one half to negative c plus three minus two equal to negative four. And we need to figure out what that c value is. Okay, um, so go ahead and let's solve for that. First, I'm gonna isolate the exponential part. I'm gonna add two. So negative one half negative c plus three is equal to negative two. Then I'm gonna divide everything by negative one. So I'm gonna get one half to the negative c plus three is equal to positive two. Okay, um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to factor out a negative from that exponent. So I'm gonna get one half to the negative c minus three in parentheses now equal to two. And what the reason why I did that is because what I can do with that negative is I can use the reciprocal of one half in this spot right now. So I can get two to the C minus three equal to two. And what I'm gonna do is the exponent for two is one. So if I have um, a base of two on the left side of our equation and a base of two on the right side of our equation, what I can do is uh, I can set the exponents equal to each other. So C minus three equal to one. So I'll add three to both sides and I'm gonna get C equal to four. And you can do this just solving um, exponential equations. You could even use some logarithms here, but I wasn't about to do that. I hope some of this practice helped enlighten you on how you're supposed to do some of the homework problems that are gonna be coming up. But if you need help walking through any of these practice problems, or if you need help on your homework, please contact me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and I'm always here to help.